Welcome. Today we're going to share community service technology tools, and the goal is to empower more community service and better community service. You can also use these tools for personal use or for your business use. More details are at volunteerhelp.me or earthteamwork.com. The general idea is I've volunteered for decades and nonprofits get trapped doing administration and bureaucracy instead of actually helping. So hopefully these tools will remove or reduce that. Tools one to four include teamwork, email address, phone, and simple website. The idea with teamwork is we don't need to keep recreating the wheel. If we work with online tools that we share, then every member of the team becomes stronger. So hopefully we'll learn how to use tools and we'll start sharing things online. Two, email. Many organizations use a personal email address, which becomes a big mess in the future. It's best to create a email address using the title or the position. So your organization president or treasurer or secretary, when the individual switches positions, the email address doesn't change. Nobody in the outside has to update anything. It's the same for the phone number. You can use a Google Voice phone number for free, and the organization has a number that doesn't change even if the people change. The Google Voice number can transcribe what they speak, and it can email to whoever you wish. The simple website design is don't choose something complicated that no one in the future knows how to update. So for example, Google Sites, you don't pay anything for a Google Site. You have your own hosting space. If you use their docs, you have unlimited storage space. The cost would come if you wanted a domain name, a pretty name. Um, so you'd pay $12 or $20 a year to have the pretty name that connected to the Google website. Tools five to eight include personalized maps, county and zip code uh, tracking of information, feedback using a Google form, and calendar event adding. Uh, starting with maps, Google My Maps is a free uh, option that allows rows of data that have addresses to be automatically mapped into an interactive map. And that map could uh, graphically show uh, your reach, where you've done projects, uh, where you've delivered products. Uh, it can include pictures or videos. So really useful for the outside world or for your members to understand what you've done. County and zip code links. A lot of organizations uh, track information by their area of service, but the outside world uses zip codes and counties. So when possible, in your spreadsheets or in your databases. Do things by zip code or county. Um, and there's a lot of online tools that will uh, allow you to, say, VLOOKUP in a spreadsheet uh, where a location is. Feedback with Google Forms. Uh, when you ask for feedback, instead of emailed feedback or yellow sticky notes or scraps of paper, use a Google Form that's free. It'll link to a Google spreadsheet. When the person gives you the feedback, It'll go into a row with nice little column headings. So really easy to understand and use. And you can set it to email you if anyone responds. So you don't have to constantly check. Number eight, uh, Google Calendar with a form. Uh, it's nice to create a calendar and make it public. So you're not sharing it by email address. And then it's nice if many people have the option to add events so that you don't have a backlog or get trapped with one person being too busy. There's uh, many options that allow it, but in essence, the form on submission adds the event and you can uh, restrict the form with a password so that uh, you can't add an event unless you know the password. Rules nine to 12 include a calendar overlay, personal SMS texting, mail merge docs in Google Docs and an online resource library. So calendar overlay, allows multiple organizations or people to each maintain their own calendar, but you can overlay it and then share that with the public on your website. Again, make it public, not uh, email uh, security shared. Uh, it helps stop or prevent conflicts. It lets you look back into the past if you want to know what you did last year at this time. Um, it makes it much, much simpler for people than trying to search through email messages to figure out what's going on. Personalize SMS and text. The world seems overloaded with emails, so it's possible for free 
to send individualized messages to people with just content they care about. The general idea is in a spreadsheet row or in a table row, you start with a phone number and then you add the message after, uh, which you can do in clever ways in Excel. And then you can send to many people at the same time their own personalized messages. Seems when it dings in their pocket, they actually respond, like reminder for a meeting or confirmation of an order. Mail merge with Google Docs, same, uh, it puts it online so it can pass from person to person. The doc, uh, the Word document or the Google Doc can merge with rows of information in a Google spreadsheet. This means, uh, say, personalized name tags or ID cards or invoices or thank yous. It stops you from copy pasting or trying to edit things by hand. If you combine that with a Google form for input, it's really, really simple to uh, automate processes and procedures. And then last, uh, online resource library would be extremely helpful if information was easy to access. So a simple version would be you create a Google folder and you share it. And then you allow people to either update what's in the folder with their own folders or with docs. So you could say each department gets a Google doc. They're allowed to update that Google doc. Anybody on the outside who wants to see what's going on either goes to the website and the website shows the folder or they go straight to the folder and then they can see the contents inside. Tools 13 to 16 include personal email merge, form to sheet, online filter and sort, and digital literacy. So personal email merge, it's possible to personalize your email messages, not send CC or BCCs. The individual only receives information they're interested in and it can be tracked. Did they open it? Did it bounce? Did they click? Did they respond? So really useful tool is called uh, YAM, yet another mail merge, and it's a free add-on to Google Gmail. 14 form to sheet. We mentioned it for feedback, but you can use it for anything, uh, registrations, surveys, uh, anything where you want to collect information in an organized way. You create a Google form, you validate their answers so they can't put in dates that don't exist or numbers that are too high. And then that links directly to a Google Sheet. So if you're going to review the information, you just look at rows in a sheet. And if you know how to make a pivot table or sort things, it's much, much simpler to work with information in that format. Uh, filter sort uh, online. You can share spreadsheets online and make them public for viewing so that you don't need uh, special permissions. And then within those sheets, you can show people how to filter and sort. So they can say, as long as you have a column, they can say, only show me the zip code I'm interested in or the gender or whatever the topic is, the county, the city, and it'll sort or filter the information as desired. Digital, digital literacy online, it's really helpful to have short videos that show people specific skills. So digitalliteracy.club has 30 second videos that cover Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. It's also possible to make your own doc or spreadsheet with links to YouTube videos you found useful or the organization would find useful. So don't make the person search everywhere. Just have them go to your website, they'll click on the doc or they'll click on the spreadsheet and then they'll see the links that you thought were important for training. Tools 17 to 20 include video from PowerPoint, pivot table reporting, Word, Excel merge, and uh, Word publishing. So video from PowerPoint. PowerPoint has the ability to save to video. And if you set the slides up as a little storyboard format, you can add audio to each slide and then save to video, upload to YouTube. And if you want, edit the video on YouTube. Or modify the slides and save again. So it's a very simple way to make organized videos. Uh, Excel pivot table. Pivot table's the most useful reporting tool in Excel. The key is put all your data in a single sheet. Don't make uh, different sheets for different months or different years or different departments. Put it all in one big ugly sheet. Don't show anybody that sheet. And then whenever you want a report, you say pivot table off that data. And once you're good at it, you can get any report that you wish by number or by chart graph format. 
labels and name tags <clears throat> and Word and Excel merge. Uh, Word can do almost anything you want, and then it merges with uh, rows of information in Excel. So if you wanted to create name tags, you want to create certificates, uh, you want to create thank yous, or pretty much anything with personalized information in it, you pull the personal information from the row in Excel, and it merges with the Word document to create an individual page. Uh, Word publishing. Turns out Word can do almost anything you want for design if you know how to manipulate pictures on the page and use text boxes as a bare minimum. So once you learn to, to be able to move a picture around or to put text in a box, you can control the layout on the page almost any way you want. Tools 21 to 24 include online graphic design, Zoom video with captioning, online whiteboard and online payment systems. Uh, for example, of an example of a graphics design is Canva, free program, lets you do all kinds of clever things, uh, brochures, pamphlets, business cards. Yeah, you do the layouts and then you could share them with other organizations similar to yours or other members like you. So you don't hold the document only on your computer and then have a problem in the future trying to create the next year's version. Zoom with captions. It's a feature you turn on and it'll transcribe everyone speaking in a meeting and save it as text. And then that text you can use as the minutes for the meeting or as a searchable way to figure out what went on. Uh, it's also possible to record videos in Zoom and then upload them to YouTube for editing. Uh, whiteboard Padlet. This is an interactive way for people to share text, audio, video, images, all types of information. And you could use it interactively in a meeting. Say you had 100 people, they could all use their phone, they could all access the whiteboard at the same time, answer questions, uh, share pictures, or you could use it when people can't show up at the same time to a meeting. So they could be updating the whiteboard for review by others. It also allows you to save the whiteboard. Payment systems, there's all kinds of problems with accepting cash, including people not having cash. So it's nice if your organization sets up PayPal, Venmo, uh, multiple different ways of paying, and then also has a handheld card reader. They're pretty cheap, uh, cheapest, say $30 that'll work with your phone. And then you've eliminated a lot of the steps associated with cash and checks and banking. Tools 25 to 28 include uh, discounted hardware and software, $10 computers, online wish lists, and a nonprofit directory online. The example of TechSoup, they're a phil phil philanthropic organization that specializes in finding discounted hardware and software for nonprofit organizations. So you can save huge amounts of money by going through them instead of writing special grants to spend a lot of money. Uh, GE Elfin Computer Rehab offers $10 laptops and desktops uh, that you submit a request, take them a couple of months, and then you go pick them up or they mail them to you. There's other organizations like that, but the idea would be don't waste your money buying new computers. Amazon Wishlist, most organizations want an end product so the only reason they collected money was to get to the end product. You could allow people to purchase the end product directly, skip the part where you had to track it all with money, and then they use the mailing address of the recipient at the, the end. So if somebody, let's say, children wanted books in a library, then the children identify the books they want. The individuals go on the website, they see the item, they click on it, they pay, and then they use the shipping address of the child, and the book arrives directly. You skipped transportation, storage, collecting the money, and there's direct accountability and transparency for, for where everything came from and went to. A nonprofit directory, this would benefit, benefit every stakeholder. Um, most groups only know a tiny version of what's possible in their local area, so it would be great to have, a, say, a spreadsheet that everyone could share to, or they could share using a Google form and submit information that showed up in a spreadsheet, and then somebody later can uh, eliminate the duplicates. 
Tool 29, Business Cards. Often the public doesn't understand the mission or the accomplishments of the organization, so you could use a double-sided color business card to share with the public what you do and leave an empty space for your members to fill in contact information as desired. Uh, Staples has an online business card option, 500 cards, double-sided color for tw about $27, which is five cents per card. It's an excellent way to recruit members and to share with people what you do. Thank you for taking the time to understand how to create a better community and to empower others who are helping. For more information, you have uh, volunteerhelp.me or earthteamwork.com. Both of those have a place for feedback, which would be wonderful. Or if this video is posted, maybe add a comment if you can. I'm sure there's many other tools that I've missed. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.